new year. And folks, we need to do everything we can to be weirdness, aware of what we, where we're at and what we're doing. Hey, Tony, did you want to come up and sing this with you? You probably don't know it. Well, come on up. Don't hold any mistakes against me. <laughs> we never get the same together. You know this one? No, but I'll take it out, maybe. Okay, you just jump in there whenever you feel something. Okay. Here is love. Fast as the ocean. Love and As the blood.
your practices. <laughs> anybody that has to get up saying with us, I feel sorry for anybody that has to do that. I go, I do it slower than anyone else. But I do love Jesus. It was very nice. Okay. We are closing in Isaiah again today. We're going to be seeing something that happens when understanding the mercy and grace of God. Uh, and this is called a vow to make. We're going to need, we need to make a vow. Amen? To the Lord. We've made a commitment to Him. He saves us for what? Our devotion, our love, our service. But Isaiah 19 wants to look at verses 18 through 25. And before I read that, I want to kind of go back. If you look at 1 through 17, Egypt has been put through the mill. They have been judged and tried. And through that, we're going to be seeing in the scripture that we're going to be reading, we're going to be seeing God's mercy upon Egypt. Now the point that I'm making here is if God can have mercy on Egypt, could he have mercy on us? Amen. He will have mercy on us. He, and, and here in the times, uh, and it'll say in that day several times in the scripture, in that day. And in that day, I want you to think about two things. Number one, in that day of God's tribulation and trials. And number two, in that day, Jesus' restoration. So in that day, it's pointing to a definite time. We don't know when it is, but God does. So let's look at verses 18 through 25. In that day, five cities in the land of Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear by the Lord of hosts, one will be called the city of destruction. And that there is Heliopolis, Heliopolis, which is called the city of the sun in Egypt. And they worship sun and Ra in this, in this city. But after tribulation and after trials and struggles that they've had to go through, they decided to turn to God. Okay, this is where we stand. And in that day, there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border. And it will be for a sign and for a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt for for they will cry to the Lord because of the oppressors, and he will send them a savior, a mighty one, and he will deliver them. Then the Lord will be known in Egypt, and the Egypt Egyptians will know the Lord in that day and will make sacrifice and offerings. Yes, they will make a vow to the Lord and perform it. And the Lord will strike Egypt. He will strike and heal it. They will return to the Lord and heal it. I'm sorry. They will return to the Lord and he will be entreated by them and heal them. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian will come into Egypt and the Egyptian into Assyria. And the Egyptians will serve with the Assyrians. In that day, Israel will be one of three with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed is Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for this time that we have together. I do thank you for the promise that we have of mercy and grace. Yes, we, Lord, we may go through trials, we may go through tribulations, but in the end, your desire is for people to come to know you, of who you are, and for us to adore you, Father. And we come to know you through trials and then your mercy and grace. So I do pray, Father, for those who in the earshot of your word, 
that you will write to the tables of their heart the true word of God and draw them ever so closer to you because Lord we cannot even come to you unless you draw us we know that we love you we thank you for this time we have together we thank you for the year that has passed and look forward to the year that's coming just use us as a mighty witness for your kingdom in Jesus Christ's name, name we pray Amen all right, now the Lord, I want you to understand, the Lord has mercy. How, how many of you experienced the mercy of God? Yes. Each, each one, if we've come to that point of knowing Him as our Lord and Savior, we've experienced the mercy and grace of God. Because we didn't deserve salvation, amen? But Jesus Christ bore our sins. So, uh, and, and I, I had also said that, that in that day, several times there in that day, if you read, I do encourage you to read all of chapter 20 here to see exactly the change here that's made. But this message is entitled, A Vow to Make. We have a vow that we need to be making in our own life. We are looking at a new year coming, amen? Uh, and I tell you what, I, I am thankful for last year, but I want to be better this year, Amen? I want, to, I want to do everything I can to be an influence at, at, in someone's life and help them come to know Jesus Christ. Folks, we need that desperately, don't we? And, and as a church, not only individually, but as a church, we need to work together to, to help reach those who need Jesus Christ. So the first vow we need to make is I will endeavor to better understand the three things about the Bible that I need to understand. Number one is I will accept the Bible as the inspired word of God. Listen, this is not a book of literature. It's a living word and it's been given to us. And in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So profitable means beneficial. You, you know, uh, you, you farmers and ranchers out here, you have equipment that helps your job be able to be a little bit better. You don't have to pull up behind a mule anymore. You get a, a, a board, a big tractor, and it takes you, and you're able to do a lot more land. And that, that is a useful tool, amen? It's beneficial to the work. Well, the Word of God is beneficial to the believer in being able to share others. It's kind of like a big tractor. We can just grab, we can jump on top of it and just go and, and we can believe in what the Word of God says. We don't have to doubt that. Amen? And if, if, if it says here that it's complete, that, it, that the man of God, and I don't say the person of God, ladies as well, may be complete. What does complete mean? Full. Whole. Not missing any parts. Thoroughly equipped. That you'll be able, when you go out in this world and you have an opportunity to be able to uh, be a witness, you can speak from the heart to someone. That's what the Word of God can do for us. For every good work that we may be complete and equipped for every good work. Folks, I tell you what, the only good work there is is the work that we can do, whatever we're doing, wherever we're placed is doing it in Christ. And let Christ be seen in us as we are busy doing what we should be doing for the kingdom of God. And then the second point is I will accept the Bible as my light and guide. And this is, now this is a vow that you should be making now. I want you to understand this. Psalms 119, 104 through, and 105. Through your precepts or your teachings, your instruction, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light 
to my path. Now, we need to reject false teaching. Amen? Listen, if you hear me up here saying something that's not <laughs> biblically based, you need to call me on the carpet with it. It's your responsibility. Amen? If you have a question about something I say, please come to me. I may be an error, and I don't want to be an error. I want to be true to the Word of God completely. And we, we should never turn, and we should exercise everything that we're doing, grasping the truth, getting a, a, a complete understanding of that truth, grasping it. Oh, I know what this means. You see? And, and sometimes the Word of God comes to us in many different ways. We, we was talking about hyssop this morning. Uh, people need to understand the fullness of hyssop, of what it's doing. You know, cleanse my heart with hyssop. And, and, and we need to understand that sometimes there's trials that we have to go through. But it's also the blood that was applied to the, the, the heart of man. So please understand, we need to know what the Word of God truly is saying. And sometimes we read an English word, and it may have a different meaning completely in the Greek or the Hebrew. And not everybody has the tools to be able to study that. And that's my job to try to study uh, to, where I can show myself to be approved uh, in the Word of God. But sometimes we have to. The English word is not exactly what it is. It, it, it has a wide range of meanings compared to the Greek as to where it may have five different words for, where we use one word. And I can, I can name several instances of that. And then the third point is, I shall ever keep in my mind the fact that one day I will be judged by the gospel. I'm going to make a vow. I'm going to keep it here. And I'm going to be judged by this word. Romans 2.16 And that day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to the gospel. According to the gospel. And Jesus is the living word. He's the word come to life. Amen. Now, I will endeavor, here's the second vow that we need to be making. The first one was I will endeavor to better understand three things about the Bible. The second is I will endeavor to better understand three things about the church. I will respect the church as property purchased by the precious blood of Christ. Folks, now listen, we, come in the, we meet in this building, but this building is not the church. The church is us in this building right now. And we, we need to love this church. We need to love each other. We need to encourage one another. While it is today according to the word of God. But in Ephesians 2, 13 and 14, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. We talked a little bit about that concerning prayer today in Sunday school. The, the wall of celebration is, uh, separation has been torn down. The curtain. We are one together. How many of you, how many of you feel like you're one with each other? And in Christ. And that Christ should be in us as a group as well as individuals corporately and individually. This is what a church is. I will honor the church as a divine institution. Matthew 16, 18, and 19. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, and that rock was his faith in God. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whenever you bind, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And where whatever is loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. Church, we have a big responsibility, don't we? And if we look really at this nation today, we will see that the church hasn't done really what it needs to be doing. We, we've allowed prayer to be taken out of schools. How many of you read a Bible verse when you was in school? Did you did you ever read one when you 
Catholic school. Oh, okay, okay. Well, we we always I always had a pledge of allegiance and prayer and Bible reading. All my years in grade school, they don't allow that anymore. And used to, and, and they said in, in court systems, in, in God we trust. That's not terrible. Been taken that away. But then I will assemble with the church regularly. Hebrews 10, 23, and 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who is promised is faithful. And let us consider, now this is the reason it is important that we do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Let us consider one another in other in order to stir up love and good works, and not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as in the manner of some, but exhorting or encouraging one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Consider one another. Folks, you see, sometimes when I come to church, I'm down in the mouth. I need someone to help pick me up, encourage me. And old devil, he, he wants you to get down in the mouth and not come. Because he knows what's going to happen if you come to church. We need to do everything we can. The whole purpose of coming to church, I don't want you religious. I don't want you folks to be religious. I want you folks to have a good Christian relationship with an almighty Savior that leads us to uh, <coughs> throughout eternity that we can serve and walk with and be with. But at the same time, well, in the meantime, sometimes I need encouragement. Brother Ray, I need some encouragement. How about you? Yeah. We, we need to poke each other, <laughs> prod each other along. <laughs> that, hey, we can do this. Sometimes we just need to hear, we can do it. Maybe an Anna boy or an Anna girl on the back, pat on the back. We can do this together. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, when we uh, take ourselves out of the assembly of ourselves together, we fall apart. And the reason I say that is because we don't have each other to encourage and to protect us, to help us as we go on. So uh, that's, that is one thing that we should not forsake. That is why we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. It's not so you can put money in the offering plate. Okay? It is that we need each other. We need each other's heart. We need each other's love. I, I, I value your love. I really do. I value it. It's, uh, uh, right now, with the, the way things have been in my life, it, this, is, this, is, this is like a precious jewel to me. That I have folks that, that love. My, my daughter sat here and said, I just love that picture. She hadn't seen me laugh like that in a long time. She saw a picture of me like that. And you know why? Because of those <laughs> We were all laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, but see, that's what happens. The joy of the Lord comes in, in the midst. Amen? And that's what happens when we're together. And it should always be that way. The third vow that we should make is I will endeavor to better understand my relationship with Christ and who Christ is. You know, years ago when I came, when I surrendered to him, I said, well, yeah, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm his. But I'm going to tell you in the 30 years or 20 years or however long it's been, I, I've got to tell you that he has been revealing himself over and over and over again. I know him so much more and so much better today than I knew him then. And, and I, I am just thankful that we can grow and mature in our faith with him. But I shall ever remember that through and by him I can be saved and by faith I am being saved. Now, did you notice I said being saved? You have been saved. You are being saved. You will be saved. Listen, salvation is an ongoing act. Amen? It's something that's ongoing constantly as we walk in Christ. 
we're experiencing it. Now, I believe in the security of the believer. Don't, don't, don't take me wrong here. But salvation is an ongoing process in who we grow in. And one day, I will be, I will have experienced the ultimate salvation when I will be in His presence. And that's really important to understand. In Acts 4, 10 through 12, let it be known to you all and to all people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, and by him, this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. I wrote out here to the note of that, We are fellow, fellow builders. We're building. We're building the body of Christ. The, the, you know, the Bible even uh, addresses y'all as precious jewels and foundation. You may be foundation for your generation. Let's build on that. Christ is the true foundation, amen? But within your family and, and some of your generation, you may be the foundation that gets them to begin to build continually on Christ. But we always have to focus on one thing, that Christ is the true foundation. And that's what we need to build. And, and now listen, uh, if it comes to building uh, uh, anything, uh, it would probably fall apart if I had to build it. But I can tell you that I am trying my best to build a church. Amen. I, I tried to build a cellar one time and it fell in. So that, there you go. <laughs> Going to pour all one pour, and I found out I, I, I didn't know too much about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but next, I shall never forget that Christ lived a sinful life, a sinless life, and that he is my example. In 1 Peter 2, 21 and 23, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, his father. He said, into the hands I commit myself. Folks, I'm telling you right now, should we follow Christ, the example of Christ? Yes, we should follow him all the way to the cross. Did he not tell us to pick up our cross and follow him? Take up our cross and follow him. And the third point is that I have no right to my selfish desires, for I am not my own. Christ bought me. In 1 Peter 1, 17 through 20, and if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from the aimless conduct uh, received. Let's see. From the aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers which was a lot of religious rub rub. But with the precious blood of Christ as of the lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And the last point I want to make is that salvation, don't forget your salvation. Salvation brings very specific blessings. Salvation brings fear of the Lord and the judgment of God is stayed or is kept away as long as we are in Christ. Salvation brings conversion from the old person to the new creature, new creation. Salvation brings true worship which brings deliverance from sinful ways. Salvation brings commitment 
which brings knowing Christ like never before. And folks, I'm going to tell you, our salvation, our relationship with Christ, it has to be commitment. He won't accept anything else. He will not accept anything else. We must be committed to Him. I, I want to ask you, was Christ committed when He came here? Yes. All the way. And the last thing is salvation brings peace that surpasses all understanding. Folks, you know, I see people who are in sin who have not experienced Christ. And they struggle. They, 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 they struggle. Their, their misery uh, just is eating them up like a cancer. Their unforgiveness, they, they, they have guilt. They're, they're guilt ridden. And salvation delivers us from all of this. It, it gives us peace of mind, peace in our spirit. It gives us a joy that even when things don't seem to be so good, we're still joyful. I'm not going to say happy because happy depends upon happy chance. But joy is God's center. And what God gives us, this world can take away from. We're beginning a new year. In this, Egypt is talking about a new year. We'll have a, a new time. They, if Egypt can find peace and salvation, can we? Yes. We can find that in Christ. But we've got to get our stubborn will out of the way. And cry out, Lord, just take me and do it as you will. And I'm going to tell you, when we hit that one point of surrender, God can really change a life. He can make it new like we have a new year coming up. He can give us a new creation. The old man that I was isn't here anymore. I'm a new creature in Christ. And I'm very proud of that. And uh, if, we, if we come together as a church, there's many people that need to know Jesus Christ. And you know, you can be a bright, shining star in a very dark and dim world. <clears throat> there's people out here that really need help. They need love. They need to know love. And Jesus Christ is love. He's the one that truly gives it to us. It's all power here. Father, we just thank you so much for this time that we have together. I thank you that we have had the opportunity to worship you uh, this day and many days in the past. And Father, we're looking forward to many more. But I pray that you will put a burning desire in our heart, a burning desire to see that people who do not know you to where we can be a witness to them and perhaps your spirit can draw them to the truth. We love you, Father. We really do. And I pray that for every person here that you will just bless them for the coming year. Bless them as only you can bless them. Even through the trials, let us learn your nature. But these vows that we've gone over today, Father, don't let us forget them. Let us realize that we must continue on in our walk with you each and every day. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead.